At the beginning of November, 5,000 prisoners were released. The 900 they left behind were transferred to other detention centers. Less than a month later, FIFA allowed Chile to play a World Cup qualifier in the very same stadium. Their opponents, the Soviet Union, refused to play there, so Chile were allowed to score into an open goal and went through to the 1974 World Cup Finals. <laughs> With the population in shock, Pinochet imposed the policies recommended by the Chicago boys. Removal of price controls, the sale of state companies, the removal of import barriers and cuts to government expenditure. Friedman later openly acknowledged the importance of the Chilean experiment. Here was the first case in which you had a movement toward communism, which was replaced by a movement toward free markets. It didn't work. A year later, inflation was 375% per year, the highest in the world. So in March 1975, Arnold Harberger and Milton Friedman flew into Santiago. He used a phrase that had never before been used in a real-world economic crisis. He called for shock treatment. He said that he was like a doctor that was going to help a country that was suffering an epidemic and he was simply prescribing the medicine. Friedman wrote that General Pinochet was sympathetically attracted to the idea of a shock treatment but was clearly distressed at the temporary unemployment it might cause. It rapidly became clear that Friedman's economic policies benefited the wealthy at the expense of the poor. It was calculated that a family trying to live on the average wage had to spend 74% of its income on bread. Items such as bus fares or milk became luxuries, and Pinochet got rid of free milk in school, a move that echoed the controversial policy of the young education minister in Britain, who would later become his friend. In order to enforce these economic policies, there had to be an enemy to fear. Tampoco yo que se haya triunfado totalmente sobre el marxismo. El marxismo es como un fantasma. Cuesta mucho tomarlo. Mejor dicho, no se puede tomar. Friedman and Harberger argued that free market economics went hand in hand with freedom and democracy. But in Chile, where their ideas were being implemented within the context of a military dictatorship, the opposite was true. Many in Latin America saw a direct connection between the economic shocks that impoverished millions of people and the epidemic of torture inflicted on those who believed in a different kind of society. One of those was Orlando Letelier. Letelier had been Allende's ambassador in Washington. He spent a year in one of Pinochet's prisons before being exiled back to America. In 1976, Letelier wrote, The economic plan has had to be enforced, and in the Chilean context, that could only be done by the killing of thousands the establishment of concentration camps all over the country and the jailing of more than 100,000 persons in three years. Less than a month later, Letelier was killed by a car bomb. 
Good evening. A powerful bomb today tore through a car as it was driving along Washington's usually quiet Embassy Row. The Chilean was Orlando Letelier, who also had been foreign minister during the last months of the late Salvador Allende's Marxist regime. Richard Roth reports. Michael Townley, a member of Pinochet's secret police, was behind the bombing. He'd entered the U.S. on a false passport with the knowledge of the CIA. Michael, buenas noches. Buenas noches, Pablo. La opinión del poder judicial chileno, hay confianza en él? Mira, yo confío plenamente en la en la justicia chilena como patriota y luchador anti-marxista y juntista por sobre todas las cosas. Despite his confidence, Townley was extradited to the U.S. and convicted of Letelier's murder. Pinochet ruled Chile as a military dictator for 17 years, but in a frank interview, Harberger remained in denial. You cannot have a repressive government for long within a genuinely free economic system. In the same year as Orlando Letelier's murder, Milton Friedman was awarded the Nobel Prize for Economics. I don't, you know, you people have such a distorted idea of what went on. Let me tell you some facts. Number one, I was offered two honorary degrees by universities in Chile before I went down. I refused to take them because those universities were being supported in part by public funds and I did not want to appear in any way to provide any support to the political system in Chile. I'm not a representative of Chile. I'm not an advisor to Chile. I have no commitments to the government of Chile. I now turn to you, Professor Milton Friedman. I am very sorry for this incident. It could have been worse. <laughs> what I'm trying to do in the shock doctrine is tell an alternative history of how this savage stream of pure capitalism that we've been living, capitalism unrestrained, came to dominate the world. Chile wasn't the only country in South America to adopt Chicago school policies. Friedman's disciples held key positions in Brazil and advised the government of Uruguay. Then on March the 24th, 1976, a military coup overturned the government of Isabel Perón in Argentina. A junta of three generals took over the country, led by General Videla. Go. Chicago boys landed key economic posts in the military government. They seized the opportunity for major economic and social re-engineering. And within a year of the coup, wages lost 40% of their value, factories closed, poverty spiralled. Just as in Chile, people had to be terrorised into accepting these economic policies. Videla learned from Pinochet's experience. He adopted the tactic of disappearing people. Striking a balance between public and private horror, disappearances were often carried out in broad daylight, but could always be denied. Many of the techniques used by the Chilean and Argentinian military had been learnt in the US-run School of the Americas. Torture techniques taught from rape to uh, derobing to torture with, with uh, pointed objects, breaking of uh, extremities, poking eyes out, branding. In Latin America, there are various regimes which at the moment are abusing human rights. Political murder, torture, deportations, imprisonment without trial. Using the techniques they may have learned in this establishment. Uh, you may be right. If you can say that the skills which we've taught here have been applied, I can't deny that. The use of 
torture of a known enemy soldier to gain some kind of military advantage, I think is justifiable and smart. To go beyond that, to use torture techniques merely to intimidate people is completely wrong, unethical and immoral. But in Argentina and Chile, these techniques were not used just on soldiers or terrorists. They were used on students and union members. They were used on anyone who opposed the free market economic policies of the regime. In 1978, the Argentine junta hosted the World Cup. The final was played in the stadium less than a mile away from the biggest detention camp in the country, where thousands of prisoners were held in torture chambers. And Argentina took their terror regime one step further than Chile. Among the disappeared were hundreds of pregnant women, women who were allowed to give birth before being murdered. De todas aquellas mujeres que estaban embarazadas, les permitieron tener a sus hijos para una vez que nacieran sacárselos. Y eso sucedió con 500. Yo soy uno de esos, de esos 500. Those children, many of whom were raised by families connected to the military, were a powerful reminder of the Junta's project to re-engineer an entire society. While the Junta was still in power, a group of mothers and grandmothers of the disappeared started to protest in the Plaza de Mayo. They turned detective, searching for the disappeared children. After the junta collapsed, some were found and reunited with their families. Occasionally they found remains. Mostly they found nothing. General Videla was found guilty of murder, kidnapping and torture. He was sentenced to life in prison. Early experiments in Latin America presented Friedman and his cohorts with a serious ideological problem. Friedman had promised that these policies would not just make the elites richer, but they, that they would create the freest possible societies, that this was a war against tyranny, that capitalism and freedom went hand in hand. Yet here we see that in the 70s, the only countries putting these ideas into practice were military dictatorships. Nixon had fully supported imposing these types of brutal free market policies on, in South American dictatorships. But when it came to domestic economic policy in the United States, where Nixon had to worry about getting re-elected. It was a very, very different story. 